Hello class and welcome back to my channel. For this session, we will be complete. We will be talking about completing the accounting cycle and classifying accounts. So for this specific session, we will be discussing learning objectives number four up until number seven. Okay, as we have already described, okay, what a worksheet is, and we already determined how to prepare closing entries. So learning objectives um, four, five, six, and seven will all about be the post-closing trial balance, okay? And what are the necessary steps to complete the accounting cycles? And how do we prepare a classified balance sheet? And finally, we will determine how to calculate for the current ratio and the other financial um, ratios, okay? So for learning objective number four, in here, we will explain what a post-closing trial balance is. So you saw trial balance again. This is your third time seeing this. Um, this is your third time seeing a trial balance. So first one, okay, you had an unadjusted trial balance, right? So an adjusted trial balance, this just means um, everything that is in your journal, Okay, from your journal entries and when you posted it in your ledger okay the sum of all your accounts will be under the unadjusted trial balance then your unadjusted trial balance will be incorporated with your adjusting entries so once you have your adjusting entries that will now constitute as your adjusted trial balance so this will be your second type or second kind of trial balance and the third time that you are seeing trial balance would be called as the post-closing trial balance, okay? So in the um, quiz or in the test, uh, I might be asking you how many types of or how many kinds of trial balance do we have when we complete the accounting cycle, then the answer there would be three kinds of trial balances. One for unadjusted, the second one would be your adjusted, and your final tri trial balance would be your post-closing trial balance. So we call this post-closing trial balance since it is a list of a permanent accounts and their balances from the ledger after all closing entries are journalized and posted. So what's important in this bullet point is this one, after all closing entries are journalized and posted. Furthermore, it is a list of balances for accounts not closed. These accounts are a company's assets, liabilities, and equity at the end of a period. They are identical to those in the balance sheet. The aim of the post-closing trial balance is to verify that, first, the total debits equal total credits for the permanent accounts, okay? And all temporary accounts have zero balances, okay? Your permanent accounts, this would be your assets, liabilities, and your equity, okay? All right, so in your your assets, liabilities, and equity, okay, this is your accounting equation, right? So the total of your debits should match your total of your credits. And the number two here, the requirement, it says that temporary accounts have zero balances. So just to refresh your memory, temporary accounts are your revenues, expenses, and withdrawals okay so we do not carry over it to the next accounting period or to the next year because they are temporary accounts actually these temporary accounts these are the um transactions okay that we uh prepared closing entries for okay so in the next screen okay what i have here is an example of a post closing trial balance if you can still recall from our previous discussion when we prepared our um, journal entries, sorry, our closing entries, this is already the net, okay, the net amount of our debit and credit after we incorporated all of the changes for our, um, for our um, closing entries. So this ABC XYZ capital, okay, so this is now composed of your revenue, expenses, and with your withdrawals. If you still recall prior this 11465, the amount of this was just $10,000, right? But it increased 
by 1465 as a result of the net amount of these three transactions. Okay, but as you can see in the post closing trial balance, it is still true that your total debits 2720 matches your total credits amounting to 2720. Okay, so this post closing trial balance says again, this is prepared after your closing entries has been um, established already. So in the learning objective number five, this just shows you the entire accounting cycle. Okay. So during the first half of the semester, we talked about the first seven steps, okay? Right? Again, the first question, whenever we see a transactions, our first question should be, um, is this business transaction a financial or non-financial transaction, right? So once you determine that this, this business transaction is a financial transaction, okay, then you would need to perform all of these um, steps going forward, okay? So that would be if this is a financial transaction, you should journalize it, okay? Write your debit and your credit and the amount. And then for every journal entry that you prepare, you should perform a detailed record for this, okay? From all of your, um, um, for all of the postings that you prepared, this will now be um, established, okay? Or categorized in a trial balance, but this time it is just unadjusted, okay? So the unadjusted trial balance is still not your final trial balance, um, which is the basis for your preparation of financial statements, okay? What you need to do first, again, as a recap, you need to perform adjusting entries, okay? If there are during um, the end of the month or during the end of the accounting period, okay? So if you have any adjusting entries, then you should add those, okay, or deduct those from your unadjusted trial balance. Then you would arrive at your adjusted trial balance. Once you have this adjusted trial balance, you will now be able to um, prepare your financial statements, okay? So your financial statements, um, again, these are readily um, available reports to the public, okay? This is the main reason why we go into accounting it's for us to pre prepare financial statements, okay? And then um, for this session, we're talking about actually the closing entries, okay? And the post-closing trial balance, okay? So once, you've already, once you already have your post-closing trial balance, which is this one, okay? You would now be able to prepare um, what we call classified balance sheet, okay? So <clears throat> we, here we would like to get an idea of what, uh, what this classified balance sheet means, okay? If there is classified, then you might be wondering, is there a balance sheet that is unclassified, okay? So it says here in bullet point number one, unclassified balance sheet, is one which the items are broadly grouped into assets, liabilities, and equity. Okay, it just says here broadly grouped. Okay, so they are not um, specifically located in certain groups. Okay, so the, the unclassified balance sheet, these are just bunched into one. For example, if you're just talking about our, our assets, then it just shows, it is just nested under the um, account, the asset element. Okay, if you're talking about all of our payables, then it's all nested under liabilities. Same with your equity. Okay, but on the other hand, a classified balance sheet organizes assets and liabilities into important subgroups to provide users with more useful information for making decisions. Okay, so what's important in bullet point number two, it shows you that we, what? we further classify them into subgroups, okay? So this is more specific, okay? So classified balance sheet differentiates liabilities that are due in the near future from those not due within the next fiscal year. 
Information in this case helps financial statement users assess a company's liability to meet liabilities when they come due. So in the third bullet point, classified balance sheet, it just mentions that we separate, okay, we separate those items, okay, that are due in the near future, okay, and we separate those for those items that are not due within the next fiscal year, okay? So due in the near future means within 12 months, okay? So not due within the next fiscal year means more than one year, okay? So this might be part of the test quiz. So the question there might be, um items that are uh items that are due within 12 months are this due in the near future or not okay so those are the those are the questions that might be appearing okay so in here <clears throat> um i'm showing you here under the assets okay assets is equals to liabilities plus equity which items under assets are classified as current assets and non-current assets, okay? On the other hand, in your liabilities and equity, we can further divide our liabilities as to current liabilities and non-current liabilities. And for equity, we cannot further drill it down, but just into one single account under equity, okay? So as you can see under assets, it cl clearly mentions here current assets, Current assets, meaning it is due within 12 months, okay? And then those with asterisk, okay, represents your non-current assets, okay? This will be your non-current investments, your property, plant, and equipment, and intangible assets. They are non-current assets because they are due for more than one year okay so same thing for current liabilities they are due within 12 months okay and non-current liabilities also they will be due within one year okay so one of the more important classifications is the separation between the current and non-current items for, for both assets and liabilities current items are those that are expected come due within the longer of one year or the company's normal operating cycle, okay? An operating cycle is the average length or time between one, paying employees who perform service and receiving cash from customers, okay? And number two, paying for merchandise and receiving cash from customers for a company that sells goods. In most cases, companies present their balance sheet items with the current assets before long-term assets and current liabilities before non-current liabilities. So I might be wondering how is this presented. So just imagine we have a, um, a balance sheet, right? So I'm going to put here balance sheet as of December 31, 2023. Okay, so this is what your balance sheet would look like if it is under the classified uh, method. So first, you would have um, nested here would be your assets. Under your assets, you would show here current assets, current A, and then non-current A. Right? For, for your liabilities, on the other hand, Okay, you would show it like this, liabilities and equity. If this is under classified, you would just show it for liabilities, current liabilities. And the other um, subgroup would be your non-current liabilities. And of course, we don't separate or we don't um, drill down further equity. So we just show it as equity. The, this highlights the user's assets that are most easily converted to cash and liabilities that are shortly coming due. 
Okay? So that pertains for your current. Again, if you are talking about current assets, this means that these are the items that are held by the company that are most easily converted to cash or can be translated into actual money. Okay? And for our obligation, okay, this means that these are the obligations or the promises that are coming very soon or coming or shortly coming due. Items in the current group are usually listed in the order of how quickly they could be converted to or paid in cash, which is referred to as company's liquidity. So you might want to take down this word liquidity. You will be seeing this word um, in the succeeding slides. So in a classified balance sheets, okay, assets are classified into current assets, okay, equity investment, property, plant, and equipment, and intangible assets. Again, your equity investment, your property, plant, and equipment, and your intangible assets, these are non-current assets. Okay? For liabilities, you either present it as current or non-current. So flashed here, is the balance sheet of ABC XYZ company for the um, as of April 30, 20X3. Okay. As you can see, um, you have here your assets, okay, your liabilities, and your equity. Okay. Of course, um, your balance sheet would ultimately show these three elements of accounting. Okay. But if you look further in assets, you would see that there are subgroups. Okay, that there are four subgroups within assets. First is your current assets. Next one would be your non-current investments, your PPE, and your intangible assets. So as I've mentioned, this, those that have asterisk are classified as non-current assets. Okay, meaning there are um. They're, they're expected to be used for more than one year, okay? Or more than for more than the um, accounting period of the company, okay? So the current assets, okay? These are expected, okay? To be converted into cash within the year. Okay, so meaning these prepaid expenses, okay, in case, just in case this won't be used as cash, um, it is expected that this expense will be consumed during the current year. Okay, similar with your inventory, you hold inventory for the sole purpose or for the sole objective that you will be able to sell it to your customers as soon as possible. Okay, as well as your accounts receivable, you expect that, okay, once, you're, once you sell something to your customer and your customer gives you a promise that he will pay you some time, okay? So that promise should be translated into cash as much as soon as possible, okay? However, for your non-current investments, for your PPE intangible assets, these are items, okay, that are held by the company or are owned by the company which are not expected to be sold or, or to be consumed during the current year but the company expected that they will be using these items or these objects for more than one accounting period okay so that's the main difference between the current assets and your non-current assets on the other hand we have your liabilities okay again liabilities this can be um, subgrouped as to current liabilities and non-current liabilities let's talk about current liabilities first so these current liabilities these accounts payable wages payable notes payable and current portion of non-current liabilities this means that during the year okay if you're talking about april 30 20x3 here it this means that within or before december 31 20x3 all of these items should be 
paid out already okay to your creditor or to your debtor okay so this should not be more than uh so, sorry these items your current liabilities should not exist after for more than one year okay you have the expectation that you will be settling this um for less than a year okay on the other hand non-current liabilities this means that these are your obligations or your promise to pay your um to pay your your seller okay or your supplier okay that will become due for more than a year okay so if you're talking about 20x3 here so we're expecting that this will come due 20x5 or 20x6 okay but more they will you mean um simply saying we need to settle this not within the year but more than one year or more than 365 days okay and finally you have your equity we just display here the abc xyz capital so again the current assets this would involve um all of your liquid assets so your liquid assets would be your cash your short-term investments your accounts receivable notes receivable and your goods for sale to customers or your inventory as well as your prepaid expenses okay take note that notes receivable expected to be collected after a year okay would be classified as non-current assets so let's now trace whether uh whether the mentioned accounts or assets this cash short-term investments accounts receivable notes receivable inventory and prepaid expenses are they properly presented in the classified balance sheet under current assets okay so in this slide we just have the definitions for the different types of current assets okay so boxed here in red would be your current assets which which we saw that in the previous slide we saw cash there short term investments accounts receivable inventory and prepaid expenses so we so we are showing this under the current assets or we are classifying this as current because they are expected we are expecting that we will be consuming this um the benefit from these items within a year okay that's why we call it current current meaning immediate or right now so that's how we prepare a classified balance sheet to show the portion for the current assets on the other hand as i've mentioned we have the non-current investments and this will be composed by your okay your notes receivable or your non-current investments okay, your non-current investments here example could be your debt instruments in, in bonds your loans outstanding and non-current non notes receivable okay other types of your um, non-current investments okay would be your land that is not used in operations and as you can see here you have a notes receivable that will be due on March 20x5. Take note that our balance that the balance sheet that we are concerned about is 20x3 only. Okay, so 20x3, 20x5, that is two years gap, right? That's so it so it doesn't meet the criteria of the current assets that it should be consumed within the year. Okay, because there is a two year gap. 20x5 versus 20x3. That's why we classify it as non-current assets, specifically non-current investment. The next type of non-current asset would be your PPE or your property, plant, and equipment. So this would be your machinery, your vehicles, your computer hardware, buildings, and land. Okay. So basically, take a look, um, imagine yourself in the classroom, okay? So in the classroom, you would see the overhead projector, the tables, the chairs, the computer, the whiteboard, 
everything there, right? So the college or the school um, has the intention that they will use the same object or item for more than one year, okay? So the purpose is that it will serve a lot of students, not just the current students that are employed during the semester, okay? Since the management or the school or the university has the intention to use this more than one year, thus it doesn't meet the definition of the current asset, okay? So this is more than one year. That's why we classify it as non-current asset. So in this box, so these items box in red would show, would be your land, your building, and your store equipment. Okay? So again, th these are classified as non-current assets because they're expected to be used for more than one year. And finally, we have the final type of non-current assets, which is your intangible assets. Intangible assets, this means that or these are the resources that lack physical form, okay? So you cannot hold it, you cannot see it, okay? But you have benefits that flow to the company for more than one accounting period as a result from a past transaction, okay? So example of these intangible assets would be your patents, trademarks, copyrights, and franchise rights. So it's displayed, these intangible assets, is a non-current assets. Again, just to recap, for your um, assets, okay, the non-current assets here would be your non-current investments, your PPE, and your intangible assets. Okay, so I might ask in the, in the quiz in the test, okay, I might ask you, like, trademarks are current assets. Okay, so the answer there would be false because as we know trademarks as defined in this screen these are um the comp the company's the intention for um to use it for more than one accounting period okay so it means more than one year so if it is more than one year then we would need to classify it as a non-current asset So the next um, accounting element, we have here the liabilities. Let's talk about what current liabilities are, okay? So current liabilities are obligations, okay, that is due to be paid or settled within the longer of one year of the company's balance sheet date or its normal operating cycle, okay? It says here, settled within the normal operating cycle, okay? They are usually settled by paying out current assets. So types of your current liabilities would be your accounts payable, your notes payable, wages payable, wages meaning your salaries, your taxes, interest if you have any loans, and your unearned revenues. Okay? So in the balance sheet here, again, box in red are, your, are the items of your liabilities which are expected to be settled within the accounting period, okay? So we have here, this should be non-current, non-current liabilities. So this, um, these are obligations that are due beyond the longer of one year or the company's normal cycle. So it says here due beyond, okay? So more than, more than, one year okay so examples of your non-current liabilities includes notes payable mortgages payable bonds payable and your lease obligations okay so under here we separated the notes payable okay because um this would be what this may come due for more than a year let's say this will be due on 20x5 right so there's the, a two-year gap so it's not proper for us to put it under the current liabilities because the company expects to sell sorry 
um, the company expects to pay this in two years, okay? For the next two years, right? So it's not proper for us to put it under current liabilities because again, current liabilities are expected to be settled within the year. And finally, equity. It is the owner's claim on the assets of a company. In a sole proprietorship, it is reported in the equity section with an owner's capital account. Okay? So to summarize your classified balance sheet, I'll just write it here. Classified balance sheet. For every element that we are talking about, for liabilities and assets, you can further drill it drill it out under current assets and non-current assets which are in the asterisk same thing for liabilities you can classify it either as current liabilities or non-current liabilities and the equity you you just show it independently as capital So in learning objective number six, what we want to do here is to calculate financial matters, okay? So this is more on for us to memorize what the formula is, okay? This is quite simple because once you know what the formula is, you just need to input the variables, okay? So we have different types of ra financial ratios. We have current ratio, debt to equity ratios, and others, okay? So let's talk about what current ratio is, okay? So current ratio is measured, sorry, current ratio is used to evaluate the company's ability to pay its short-term obligations, okay? When we say current, it means right now. Right now or immediately. So this immediately and right now we should be able to pay our short-term obligations or the oblig or the loans or the obligations that we need to settle within the year, okay? Or that are coming due very soon, okay? The ability to pay the day-to-day -day obligations or current liabilities with existing liquid assets, okay, is commonly referred to as liquidity. The liquid assets are those that can, that can easily be converted to cash or used to pay for services or obligations. Of course, cash is the most liquid asset. So here I have the formula for your current ratio. It is very easy because once you know what your current assets are, okay, you just divide it all over your current liabilities. So current ratio is useful for decision making and is a widely used tool in making decisions like whether or not to lend money to a company or allow a customer to buy on credit. The current ratio is calculated as current assets divided by current liabilities. So let's sample it here. Okay. So again, the, the formula for current ratio is current assets all over your current liabilities. So what you need to do here right so this is still a question mark but we know if we're looking at the balance sheet that our current assets all of this stuff here amounted to forty four thousand dollars forty four thousand four hundred okay and our current liabilities it is displayed here as twenty nine thousand dollars which is a sum of all of these items okay so once you have this already, okay, just simply divide it, divide it in your calculator. So you will be arriving on the ratio of 1.52. So if you want to interpret this, okay, to give logic on what we just calculated, this means that our current ratio is 1. Point, is 1.52, meaning that there are 1.52 um, dollars of current assets available to cover each $1 of current debt. This means that the company is in a good position to pay its day-to-day -day obligations. Okay? So it just simply attests that, you know what, our current assets are much 
um, bigger than our current liabilities. So just in case the entire amount of the 29000 comes due today, we are safe and we are covered because we have 44400 that can pay off the entire 29000 that we owe. Okay? So the next ratio is quick ratio. This is also similar with the current ratio, but in here, we will delete some items under the current ratio, okay? So the quick ratio is a simple modification from the current ratio and is a more, in the end is a more robust measure of liquidity. The current right ratio includes under the numerator only assets that are readily converted into cash, including cash and marketable securities, short-term investments, and receivables. So the items that, that are included in your quick ratio would be your cash, your cash equivalents, your marketable securities, and your accounts receivables. So once you have all of these items, you can just simply um, sum it up. And once you get the answer, okay, divide it all over your current liabilities. Okay, so let's sample how to calculate current ratio. So in this case, cash, we will include, we see it here, cash, 6,500, and we have our equivalents that is also um, renamed as your short-term investments. And finally, you have here your um, accounts receivable displayed here, 4,400, okay? Sorry, um, we have marketable securities as short-term investments, but we don't have cash equivalents, okay? That's why we have it as zero. But we have marketable securities and accounts receivable. So get the sum of this, 6, 5, plus 2, 1, plus 4, 4, okay? Get the sum of this and divide it all over your current liabilities, which is 29,000 here, then you would get um, a ratio of 0. 0.45. So what the uh, quick ratio of 0. 0.45 means, it just, uh, it just implies that there are 0. 0.45 or 45 cents of current assets available to cover each $1 of current debt. This means the company cannot rely on its quick assets to pay its day-to-day -day obligations. Again, class, um, the main essence of why we do these ratios for current and quick ratio is we want to determine whether our assets, okay, our current assets or our quick ratio, can it cover the entire amount of our current liabilities. Okay, so that's the main objective of why we calculate those. In case, okay, in case our ratio, okay, is not one is to one. Actually, one is to one is good. Okay, we can call it as good because it just simply means that for every one dollar that you owe, okay, one dollar worth of current asset or quick assets can pay it off. Okay. So this is under your assets, this is under your liabilities. But if it in case it drops, let's say for example, you have for every one dollar of liability that you have, for example, you only have like 90 cents to cover it, then it shows that your current assets or your quick assets are not sufficient enough to cover the entire amount of your short-term obligation. So that's how we analyze or interpret it. So the next type of financial ratio that we have, we call it as debt to equity ratio. So the debt to equity ratio is important for understanding the financial statements as it indicates the risk position of a company. Okay, so for quick ratio and current ratio, we use it to determine how quickly can we pay okay, our short-term obligations. But for the debt-to-equity ratio, the importance of this is for us to determine the risk position of a company. So debt financing can be costly for companies as interest is required to be paid to the bank in conjunction with principal repayments. Okay? 
Investors and external users typically like to assess debt to equity to determine the riskiness of the company in relation to the risk of default on its outstanding loans as too high of a debt load can lead to bankruptcy. So let's sample one or let's determine how can we calculate debt to equity ratio. So the formula is quite simple too. You just determine your total debt or your total your total um your total liabilities all over your total equity. So in this case our total debt or our total obligation or our total liabilities amounted to $179,000. So that is already a combination of your current liabilities and your non-current liabilities amounting to $150,000. Okay? So once once you already know your total liabilities, just divide it all over your capital which is 164,800. Okay? So what does this mean, sir? So we already know like this is already 1.09. Then what? So this means that the company's potential for bankruptcy is high. Okay? A lower number is more favorable. And the higher the number, the higher the risk associated with the potential for bankruptcy. I cannot understand. You might be wondering, okay, why why does having 1.09 debt to equity ratio lead to bankruptcy okay class just imagine that your total liabilities and your total equity okay for example your equity is only 50 dollars okay and your total liabilities are 100 just in case something happens wrong within the company for example another pandemic right it means that you are leveraging or you're financing your business primarily using liabilities in this case $100 and the investment that you actually did was only worth $50 so the ratio here would be 2 is to 1 right so it's it is risky because just in case of default just in case something wrong happens, you need to cover this $100, okay? You need to pay off your creditors, the banks, the lenders, okay? So you are overexposed in terms of liabilities or, or loans and that loans, okay, uh, attached to there is interest, okay? So interest is regularly occurring. It may be during, um, annually, um semi-monthly right or monthly but in any case it bears interest and that interest is an obligation for you to pay because if you don't if because if you miss paying the interest okay your principal or the entire amount of your loan might come due all right so that's why we're trying to say here that having a lower debt to equity ratio is better Okay, let's change the facts. That your total liabilities is 50, your equity is 100. Okay, so this means that in case something happens, okay, you can easily pay off your $50 loan from your equity because you have more equity than your obligation. So that sums up the preparation of our... Uh, post-closing trial balance so from there we did determined from the post-closing trial balance how do we classify it okay or how do we present in pr pr how do we present it in the balance sheet as classified on again to recap the classified balance sheet under the assets you can um, you have the option to subgroup all of your um, asset accounts through current assets and non-current assets similar to liabilities you would have your non-current liabilities and your current liabilities and of course your equity it will be just shown as an independent line item and for your ratios again for your ratios we discussed what current ratio is 
So current ratio would be your current assets all over your current liabilities. For your quick ratio, you would need to get your quick assets and divide it all over your current liabilities. And your debt to equity ratio, this is just simply um, dividing your total liabilities all over your total equity. So you might want to try, you know, you might want to look at um, financial statements, the balance sheets, and try to practice using this formulas for current ratio, quick ratio, and debt to equity ratio. If you have any questions, please feel free to pin it down in the comments or raise it during our class. Thank you.